All right, we, we've talked about in these laws, we may not have specifically done a problem that was super necessary, but Kirchhoff's laws say this. Law number one is the voltage law, and that says that the sum of all the voltages over a loop is zero, right? Most people just call it the loop rule. And again, we've done this forever. We know that the gains equal the losses. So if you go around any loop in a circuit, and again, lots of times on the old school circuits, we only had one loop, right? We did, we did something like this, and it didn't matter which way we went around, the gain equals the loss plus the loss, or the gain equals the loss plus the loss. Or even if you went this way, it's kind of weird, like that, that loss equal then that gain going backwards, right? Any loop we know, and it wasn't super necessary, but it was how we always explained things in parallel, had the same voltage, and how we could do V equals IR for that system to show that the battery's voltage equals the losses of those. Okay, so now we have multiple loops. We have the medium loop, we have the small loop on the right side, or we have the big loop. And again, it doesn't matter what direction you go, where you start, the sum of all the voltages around any loop has to equal zero, and it's really a conservation of energy idea. You know, we can't gain, we can't gain energy as we, as we move around. No, no energy is leaking out of the system, nor is energy energy coming into the system, right? You know, we're, we're getting energy from, from a battery and then we're dissipating energy over these resistors and the dissipation and the, the gains are all have to be balanced. The junction rule is really a current rule and it's talking about the current that flows into a junction is the current that flows out of a junction. So what we'll do is we'll look at that particular junction and there's a certain current that might be coming in and then there's a certain current going out and it's conservation of charge really because we know what current is, it's charge per second and so no charges can kind of leave the system. You have so many coulombs full, flowing here and then you have so many going this way and this way and those, have, those quantities have to be the same. So what we can do is we just name some currents and it doesn't matter, we can pick the directions wrong. Um, you can kind of get an idea of what was gonna happen and we'll go ahead and pick this one, right? So if you think about what's happening here, you have a battery here and a battery here and they're providing an electric field that's gonna push things this way. And so I think it's predictable that you know, this particular battery is gonna force some current this way and we'll call that current one. And then this battery is gonna to try to push current this way and we'll call that current two. They're gonna meet at this junction and then push some current down and we'll call that three. And you gotta think this through at first. At first this might be hard, but it's actually really easy that one and two join up here and then three comes down and then this also is a junction, but the current flowing here is the same as the current in the battery, which is the same as the current, right? This current here all has to be the same current, I1. So we know then the current comes back this way as I1, and the current that comes right here, I2 is flowing, I2 is flowing, I2, all of this is I2, so then of course I2 is flowing, and so this junction gives us the same value. Here we might say the in is I1 and I2, and the out is I3, so I1 plus I2, the junction rule says, I1 plus I2 has to equal I3, right? The ins have to equal the outs. And if we did this one, we would say I3 coming in has to equal I1 and I2 going out, which gives us the same relationship. So this equation comes from the junction rule. Now we can do the loop rule and we can start wherever we want. I'm gonna start, I almost always start below the battery. So I'm gonna start here. And so if I do this, I'm gonna gain 36 volts and then I'm gonna lose. How many volts am I gonna lose going this way across the resistor? Well, remember, V equals IR. So if I know the current and I know the resistance, I know the voltage drop. So this is just I1 times five is that voltage drop. And I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do the medium loop. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna lose that. And then I'm gonna lose another voltage over here. Uh, I'm gonna lose I3 times four, and I'm gonna go this way, and I'm gonna lose another I1 times three, and I know that's equal to zero. Again, the gains equal the losses, which is what the voltage law and the loop rule says. Gain 
loss, loss, loss have to be equal, and that's the medium loop. And I'm gonna rewrite that. See how this is minus five I one and another minus three I one, those are actually the same current. So this is 36 minus eight I one minus four I three goes to zero. And then now I'm, it, again, you can do one more equation. Think about how many variables you have here. You have three variables. You don't know I1, I2, and I3, but you know everything else. So you can either do the big loop, boom, 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 or you could do this loop. Okay, I'm gonna do that loop. I'm gonna do the small loop. So I'm gonna start here around my loop and I need to do a, a complete loop here. So I'm gonna gain 26 from this battery gain 26, and then I'm gonna lose, again, current time resistance is voltage, so I'm gonna get four I3, and then I'm gonna lose two I2, and that equals zero. And what you have here is you have three equations, equation one, equation two, and equation three, and you have three variables. So at this point, it stops being physics and it just becomes math. It's three equations and three variables and you have to solve a system, okay? I'm gonna show you how to use matrices to solve it, but again, it's not like substitution wouldn't work. You could easily solve this equation for I3, which it already is, and take I1 plus I2 and put in I1 plus I2 right here and I1 plus right here, and then you'd have two equations with just I1 and I2, and you could solve that with an additional substitution step, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write out all three equations here and I'm gonna rearrange them just a little bit. So I'm gonna look at this equation first, and I'm gonna call it I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals to zero. I'm gonna look at my second equation, and I'm gonna add these to the other side. And so it's gonna be eight I1 plus zero I2s, and then plus four I3s, and that's gonna equal 36. And then I'm gonna add those to the other side and I have zero I1s plus two I2s plus four I3s equals to 26. And if you remember matrix, uh, matrices, I'm gonna take this system of equation, I'm gonna turn it into a matrix. And again, I'm gonna use the coefficient matrix here and I'm gonna go one, one, negative one, 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 negative one, eight, zero, four, Eight, zero, four, zero, two, four times the matrix I1, I2, I3. Right? If you don't remember this, you might need a refresher in terms of matrices, but think about how you multiply matrices. You take rows times columns. So this first row, one, one, negative one times this column, I1, I2, I3, gives you back this line. One, I1, one, I2, negative I3, and that equals 0, 36, 26. So what I'm doing here is I'm changing like a, a Cartesian kind of three equations, three unknowns into a matrix equation. And again, this is a matrix. This is matrix A times some matrix X equals some matrix B. And the beauty thing is your calculator can solve this in a second because if we want to solve, meaning we want to know matrix X, matrix X is I1, I2, and I3, we can tell our calculator how to solve this because what your calculator can do, again, reminder of matrices, if you have matrix A times matrix X equals matrix B, you can multiply by A inverse, which is the inverse matrix. A inverse times A is the identity. The identity matrix doesn't do anything. And then X equals inverse A times B. So if you want to find this matrix, all you're going to do is tell your calculator, tell it what matrix A is, tell it what matrix B is, and then tell it to do A inverse times matrix B. Uh, and then you can go ahead and do that. And again, I'm not sure how helpful this will be if you can see this. Okay, so we can go ahead and do this if we want. Hit math, oops, nope, oh, sorry. Hit see a second matrix, matrix, and then go to edit. So I'm scrolling over to edit and I wanna make matrix A. Matrix A is a three by three, and then it's one, one, negative one, eight, zero, 
4, and then the last line is 0, 2, 4. Okay, I've told it what matrix A is. Quit, back into matrix, see the little blue matrix, now I want to edit matrix B. Matrix B is a 3 by 1, and it is 0, 36, 26. Okay, get out of there. So now your calculator knows matrix A and matrix B, and to solve for this, we just do this math. We just need to tell our calculator to go ahead and multiply, well, find matrix inverse A and then multiply by B. So go ahead and do second matrix, and I want to use A. I don't want to edit A, I want to use A. I don't want A though, I want A inverse. So go ahead and hit that button to give you A inverse, and then go second matrix, and then to B, and then use B. So it's now I'm telling my calculator, multiply matrix A, or A inverse times B, and I get two, three, five. So 2, 3, 5 is matrix X. X equals 2, 3, 5. And what that's telling me is it knows then that I1 is 2 amps, I2 is 3 amps, and I3 is 5 amps. And so what we're saying is 2 amps, 3 amps, join to 5 amps, come down and then split back to two and three amps and then we could find all these voltages okay so I'm gonna check this just to make sure everything works let's look at the voltages on all these things if we know I1 is 2 then this better be 10 volts right 2 amps going through 5 ohms is 10 volts there okay I3 was 5 amps so then 20 volts here and then I1 was 2 amps so that's 6 volts here and this is I2 at 2 ohm, I2 is 3, so this is 6 volts. And now we can just check to make sure we did everything right. So first, the junction rule works. 2 amps, 3 amps are coming in, 5 amps are going down, right? The junction rule is satisfied. And now let's look at the loop rule. Gain 36, lose 10, lose 20, lose 6. 10, 20, and 6 make up 36, so our three losses do equal our gain. And then if we do this loop, we can go up 26, down 20, down 6, and 20 and 6 equal 26. So both of these things we verified are true based on our answer. If you don't want to use matrices, which I think you'd be crazy not to because your calculator can do that very fast, then you just have to solve this algebraically and go back to Algebra 2 and remember how painful it is to solve a system of three equations and three variables. It's a lot of, you can just make lots of mistakes. Your calculator can solve matrices really easy. Putting something in matrix form is easy. You know, you're just rearranging. Um, these all do have to be in the same order. So it's like one, two, and three, one, two, and three. Hopefully you understand that I put that in that order for a reason. But this is Kirchhoff's laws and it can do as many as you want. You can make these, um, these systems as crazy as you want now and it doesn't actually change the math because you just keep doing, you know, a loop rule or a couple loop rules and a junction rule. And if you, even if you have five equations and five variables, you still just set up the matrix equation and your calculator takes the same amount of time to solve um, when you're using that. Okay, so this is a, a pretty good example of, of Kirchhoff's laws that are being applied where you have multiple batteries and multiple loops and, uh, you know, you just can't use some of that old stuff. Okay.